Hello from Farland. Something interesting showed up in the mail, and uh, I haven't opened it yet. I thought I would save that for you. So, what do we have here? I got it from Digitrains. I have sound locomotives from Howes and Olivia's. Oh, this is a list of the uh, functions. Sound off on, twin horn, horn, break off. You can read that if you want. Two copies. And inside, let's see what we've got here. Get this foam rubber off the top. I love the way Daypole packs their locomotives. They pack them with some very nice materials. In my case, good for shipping across the ocean. So we have the locomotive and the cube pack. And there seems to be something down at the end of this box. I don't know what it is. Difficult to get out. In fact, I don't know if I can get it out. Oh, there it comes. Appears to be a detail pack. I rarely, I rarely put that detail on because it just, I find it lying around in the ballast on the layout somewhere and I don't even know what locomotive it goes to. No idea what these are. Guess I'll find out. Oh, uh, running numbers. I can pick one. I'll have to do some research there. See if I can find something that might be semi-appropriate for my fantasy layout. Now you can tell I haven't opened this yet because I have no idea how to. Farland don't know how. There, got that off. Seems to be just a, a little background. Well, I'll read that later. Let's get this out. I gave it a quick read just to see what I had here. And we have maintenance instructions, lubrication, how to get into it. DCC information. When I ordered it from Digitrains, Jeremy up there said that it had plenty of room for a speaker. And I see that they've allowed for one. That was also the case in my class 52. They made adequate allowance for a speaker. Uh, warning, be careful, the body's wired to the chassis. Well, hopefully I won't need to take it apart. I prefer not to with my clumsy fingers. The next thing you know, it won't work right. Appears to be the blanking chip. Ooh. Top is a little loose. I wonder if it's supposed to be like that, or if Jeremy forgot to put the screws back in it. I'll send him a note and ask him. There it is. It's quite heavy. Very lovely. I got it in BR Blue. I'm sort of bleeding towards the, my layout seems to be bleeding away from the 66, 67 category and into the early 70s. So I decided to get this made out of, a, or liveried in BR Blue. There's no driver in there. And no driver in there. Well, it can go around. Fitted wipers. Oh my, look at the detail around there. That's exquisite. Lamp irons, hand grip. Oh, look at that grill. Oh boy, that's a beauty. It says the top grill is uh, etched. Now to me, this screams British design. I mean, after all, nobody really knew what a locomotive was supposed to look like in these days. You know, nowadays their uh, form follows function. Basic an engine is an engine sitting there with a little driver space at the end. At least in America, they're uh, they're not shapely at all. I mean, unless you like form follows function, which I do. I do. I like it. But this is a gem, really a gem. According to the little booklet here, there were uh, 58 built, but uh, none of them survived into heritage. So that's that's a shame. It's a great little locomotive. At least what I read of it. Twin brass flywheels, five pole skew wound motor. Should be a runner too. Before I run it, I decided to look it up in my favorite book, which is, let's see if I can get the camera to see that. Mainline locomotives. 
by John Vaughn. I don't know if John Vaughn knows anything more about locomotives than anyone else, but he produced this wonderful book, and there are some photographs of Class 22s in action. There's one with a steam locomotive behind. It could be that the 22 is just helping. It says uh, there's a 13-coach load behind it. There's a Castle Class 460, number 5054 Earl of, and the Class 22 came to its aid, I guess, to get up the bank. I wish I could see the running numbers there. I'd use those. Here's another photograph. Here's one in blue livery. It's passing uh, Exeter St. David's with a milk train. Well, there's something I can pull with it. Another picture of one assisting. Oh, is that? That's a 21. No, it's not the same thing, but it's close. I will have to consult Wikipedia and see what they can tell me. I got online a little while and looked it over, trying to get some help on running numbers, but really there wasn't any help because the running numbers that I wanted aren't here. So I just picked some and put them on there, and I'm sure it'll be fine. Unless some really serious modeler says, hey, you can't put that on there. Oh, well. I did find out a couple of little other details that I thought were interesting. Um, the engine was 1,000 horsepower, 750 kilowatts at 1,445 RPM. I find that interesting. I guess later versions were 1,100 horsepower at 820 kilowatts at 1,530 RPM. Transmission, of course, was hydraulic. You probably already knew that. Maximum speed, it says, was 75 miles an hour. Tractive effort of 38,000 foot-pounds. 170,000 newtons with a 25% adhesion. I guess that means that 25% of the weight of the locomotive could pull. It had train heating, so I can certainly pull a few coaches around. Had train heating, of course. You know, the Farlanders at least won't freeze. Gets pretty cold down in the basement sometimes. <laughs> Vacuum controlled air brake and handbrake. I have no idea what a handbrake is. I guess that would be a big wheel or something that you would screw down and close the uh, brake shoes onto the wheels manually. So, okay, I'm really ready now. This time, I'm going to go give it a shot and see what happens. It is truly an astonishing model. The more I mess with it here, the more impressed I get. I'm loving it. Bet I couldn't see what I was doing when I put those labels on. She runs so smoothly, too, just like silk. Give her 10 of 10. I think it's crazy nice. Thanks for watching.